Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to do a Western Swing Fiddle lesson on Right or Wrong. Right or Wrong was written and recorded by Mike Markell in 1921 and it was picked up some years later by Bob Wills in 1936 and he recorded it and the same year Milton Brown recorded it as well. And George Strait uh, in 1984 with Johnny Gimble on the fiddle also had a hit with this. I'm going to give you several different versions. I'm going to give you the, the basic melody with nothing fancy on it. I'm going to give you some ornaments, some double stops, some shuffles, and right at the end, a Western Swing solo. Uh, there's lots more Western Swing like this on the Fiddle Channel, so do have a look. And uh, if you like my videos and would like to support me in some way, then do take a look at my Patreon page. Let's get down to business with the main melody. So I'm going to throw, go through this slowly, and then we'll do it with the chords. One, two... So it's not a simple tune and it's not a simple chord sequence, um, but the actual notes are quite easy to play. Let's do the same thing but a little bit faster and with the backing. Now, that was straightforward enough. Uh, we're going to do it again, but this time we're going to do quite a lot of ornamentation. And um, most of the ornaments are uh, single note hammer-ons. And this was a particular um, characteristic of Bob Wills' own fiddle playing. Uh, not everyone realises, but Bob Wills didn't do any of the hot jazz improvisation on his tunes. Um, but he did play a lot of the main melodies. And he had a particular way of approaching these, which has been much imitated um, right up to the present day. So a simple phrase like the beginning becomes... So we're hammering on from the open A to the C. And then um, on, the, on that B we're doing the same thing. And, and this is another thing, when he plays an open A... Very often there'll be a fourth finger underneath it. Uh, and in, in this case we're going from a second finger on the D string up to the A and then doubling the A. And if you're anything like me, it's, it's quite difficult to get that note clean because your little finger is likely to want to touch the A string. So the only way around it is to bring your hand and your wrist well round so that your finger is going as vertical as possible. So just that first line. And 
then we've got and then a little run up to the ear and then the same um, fourth finger thing again hammer on second finger hammer on hammer on at the end is one that appeared on the original Bob Wills recording uh, most of the times that he played it so it's kind of become part of the melody. Right let's do that same thing again and uh, this time we'll do it with the backing and if you miss out some of these little ornaments it doesn't matter it's a kind of a, um, a seasoning that you add to the melody it's not a, um, an essential part of it so put it in when you feel like it or when it feels convenient. Drones are an essential part of Western fiddling. Uh, so basically, you find a melody note and you find a open string adjacent, either above or below, that will fit in with the chord. So on the first uh, bar, an E played over the C note is a good one, and then an E above the the B and the A note. Now we've got a D chord, so the open E is not going to sound right over that, um, but the D below it is going to sound good. And for the G chord, um, the A is not going to sound good, but the, the, G chord, the G note is. And notice I'm not doing a, a double stop on every note, uh, just on some of them. Another one. That's the A with the D on bit below it. Now here's a double stop, so it's not a. Before we did a open string, here we're doing a first finger on the E string. D drone. Okay, here's a B chord, and we're putting a F sharp note, which is the fifth of the B, below the B note. And here's a tricky one. So we're playing a C with the second finger and we're playing a G sharp with the fourth finger because that G sharp is the third of E7. So and then for that B note we're placing then G natural under it. So we've got the nice movement from to uh, down one. Okay, and uh, if you're not clear about how to do drones, then I do have a video explaining the, the basic principles behind that. Okay, let's do this with the backing.
Now notice that I didn't do any of the ornaments, or not many of them anyway, um, just because I want you to concentrate for this particular one on the double stops. But when it comes to actually performing it, then you want to put the ornaments and the double stops wherever you think appropriate. Um, there is a way of, do, of doing a double stop melody uh, where, where you play in what I call the scale of sixths most of the time. It goes something like this. That kind of thing. So we're moving, we've got a harmony which is a, an inverted third or, or a sixth below the melody line. And um, it wouldn't be too hard to work out the whole thing doing that. Um, but check out my video on the scale of sixths if you're interested in how to do that. It's a good way of giving the impression of twin fiddles, uh, even when yeah, there's only one of you. Uh, next we're going to look at shuffles. And uh, to be honest, this is not an ideal tune for shuffling, but um, it, you can play either the Nashville shuffle... Um, <laughs> that or the Georgia Shuffle. And that would work if you were playing uh, fairly discreetly behind the singer. It would help to provide some drive. And particularly if you, if you were just a duo and, they, and someone was singing, then that would help uh, a lot with the rhythm. Um, but as a lead line, doing shuffles all the way through it, I think, is a bit kind of destructive on a tune like this. It's, it's also a little bit too slow for shuffles to work well. But I'll just go through once and I will put some shuffles in. and energy to the piece when you do the shuffles but as I say you wouldn't do it all the time. Finally I'm going to give you an example of a hot licks solo and uh, when he played in a band like, like with Bob Wills he expected excitement so a, a run-of-the-mill and um, middle-of-the-road solo would really not do it and so all of his soloists kind of competed to come up with the most wacky zany uh, unusual, exciting uh, riffs and licks to, to play and um, it's very exciting doing this soloing but it's quite difficult so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you an example of a uh, once round that uses a whole load of different licks I'm, I'm not going to transcribe this but if you look on my Patreon page uh, for those of you who would like to support me then there will be a transcription of these licks and a video explaining how I do them so if you are interested uh, in this particular solo, then that's how to get at it. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon. And um, do subscribe, or send me an email, and I can send you a free PDF of all the sheet music that I've used today. I'll play you out with this solo. See you soon.